everybody, Checklist Painting here with a new video, and I've got myself this awesome new Blood Bowl model. It's from the Blood Bowl uh, Black Orc team. Came out with the uh, second season box. I've got him primed up in brown, and today we're going to be doing something that I I call sketchy style. Uh, this is a style that I really enjoy painting in. It's um, it's basically just value painting, uh, where we're going to take dark colors then light colors and layer them into our color differences, color contrasts and gradients. But it's very quick, it's very rough. Uh, there's not a lot of smoothness to these color transitions. Um, it's very sketchy, like something that you would do on a piece of paper with some like, pens and pencils or just like sketch out a painting using oil paint or something like that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is work on his skin. Just gonna block that in base coat it out. Uh, real quick, the reason I primed this guy brown is that on fantasy models, brown is like the most ubiquitous color because so much about fantasy models is either leather or cloth or flesh. And so if I have a neutral color that I want to prime a model in for a fantasy, it's almost always going to be brown. And while I'm cutting that flesh in, let's talk about what I'm going to be doing with the model and this, this technique. So I've got our little Photoshop pulled up and you can see this is what my palette looks like. Um, I didn't want to show the palette on camera because it's white palette paper, it'll blow out the color. So you can see I've got my dark flesh, uh, mid-tone green, and then I have olive flesh, which is just a beige color. And I mix those two together to create an in-between for the lightest one. And what I'm doing right here is what I'm gonna be doing on the model, lots of little, single stroke hash marks over and over and over again as if I was sketching out lines with a pen or pencil. And then what I'm gonna do is every subsequent time I touch the model with a lighter color of paint, I'm gonna create those hash marks again. So lots of little tiny brush strokes layered one on top of the other with this pattern of dark colors to light colors and that's gonna create a gradient. And when we're doing that on top of the model with all of our details, we create that color contrast and it makes the shadows darker and the highlights brighter. And then that's where our detail pops out from. And then over here, another technique I'm gonna be doing is called stippling. I've talked about this in some other videos where basically I'm touching the model with the tip of my brush over and over and over again to create lots of little dots. And then again, you just layer lighter colors over lighter colors, over lighter colors. So we go from dark to light. And then I've got my other colors from the palette. We've got like the red that we're gonna be doing where I go from purple to maroon to red to a pink to the olive flesh again. Um, and our leathers, same thing, dark brown to a medium brown to an in-between to a light brown to an almost ivory color. And so basically what I'm gonna start doing now is that sketching in of the basic muscle shapes where basically what I want to do is leave uh, the darkest green in the deepest recesses of detail uh, down there deep into those muscle details and muscle bellies and then uh, just basically pick out details with broad strokes right and just again over and over and over again I'm doing these single little brush strokes one after the other just kind of sketching it in so when you're doing this think about the way that you would color in something with a crayon or a colored pencil or a marker where you're going to move the tip of that paintbrush or colored pencil or marker or whatever back and forth or do lots of tiny little lines right next to each other layered up to create those colored in spaces that's what i'm doing where i'm picking out the detail with the brush doing all these little sketchy marks over and over and over again and then this is a really fast style, so I don't have a lot of cuts in this video. Um, when I was shooting this, I wanted to do one block at a time. So I did all the flesh, all the leather, um, all of the reds, all of the metals, etc. So you can see how fast it is. Now I've, I've sped up the footage just so you can see everything that I'm doing, but still make this video like a reasonable time to watch. So I'm going from the dark green to like an in-between to our mid-tone green. And then again, I'm grabbing that uh, olive flesh, mixing that into our medium green to create an in-between lighter green. And then on the parts where I want the poppiest of details, like where I want kind of that shine mark of a skin tone from like a cartoon or a comic book or that sort of style, I'm gonna use just the olive flesh by itself and pick that out. So that way we get that sort of 
um, fantasy art, shiny skin, rippling muscle sort of look. Just popping those last little details out right down the middle of our sketched in gradients on that green flesh. One of the reasons I really like this style of painting is because it's fairly easy to do. Um, for many years, I drew, I sketched as sort of my main hobby before I got into painting miniatures. So this sort of comes like second nature to me since naturally when I picked up a brush, I kind of started holding it like a pen or a pencil. Um, so if, if that's something that you are used to and you're trying to get used to painting models, but you're struggling with making those ultra smooth transitions and like try this out because it's a very interesting style. Um, it is highly quote unquote stylized. Um, so some people might look at this and they'll be like, oh, well, that's not how you paint models or whatever because the transitions aren't smooth and you can see all the brush strokes and you can see all these little dots and squiggles and stuff. But you know, there really is no right or wrong way to paint your models. You know, as long as you're using basic color theory and the thing looks like it's supposed to look like this guy's an orc so he's got these big muscles and green skin so if it looks like he has big muscles and green skin then we're kind of on the right path right um, it's it's just super fast to do this each one of these steps took me anywhere between five to ten minutes or less to do um, probably the longest thing it took me to do was the base coating just because as we start getting into doing our other colors i have to be more and more careful of my brush control and brush movements as I'm blocking those colors in so as not to be sloppy. Um, that is something to know. One thing about this style is it is not sloppy. It is meticulous. Everything that I'm doing while my brush strokes are erratic and somewhat random and sketchy, I'm not slapping that paint on the model willy-nilly. Like I'm not being rough. I'm not being um, loose with the brush strokes. I'm not getting you know, brown on the green flesh that we just painted, you know. But, I mean, if you do, it's easy to fix, right? So one of the issues that people have when they're getting into airbrushing and they're transitioning from laying down an airbrush coat into cutting in the details and working on the detail painting and all that type of stuff is if you are painting like sick yellow armor on a Space Marine and then you're cutting in your silver and you get silver on that yellow, well, that sucks because it's really hard to clean up because it's super hard to match the machine-like smoothness of an airbrush by hand. It's very difficult to do that convincingly. So with this, it's like, if I do mess up, it is not the end of the world. I can always go back with the colors I used before and kind of clean it up. But at the same time, part of being efficient while doing this and making sure that I'm doing this speedy and fast and free is being a little bit meticulous with my paint job here so that I don't have to go back and correct uh, like slopping paint on to stuff that it you know you shouldn't be touching with it right um, as I'm cutting in this leather the one thing that I want to talk about leather is he's got a lot of straps and things like that and leather does actually have a bit of a directional grain to it if that makes sense like if you look at wood grain it kind of all goes in one direction for the most part so I want to create these little transitions along the grain or the details of the leather. So if it's got a fold or a wrinkle, I want to go on that wrinkle. Leather also uh, weathers and fades where it is worked the most where it is folded and bent and wrinkled and crushed up the most so on his belt i'm trying to create these brush strokes directionally with the strap so uh, parallel to the direction of that strap and anywhere that these straps are hitting a curve or they're being sort of stretched like he's got these straps that are wrapped around rings and buckles and things like that. Anywhere where that leather is uh, tightest and stretched the most, that's where I want to build up the brighter colors. You can see on his back there where the leather is being stretched over that central ring that's kind of connecting everything. Those little peaks where it's stretched over there, that's where I want to build up the brightest color because that's where the leather is going to fade the most. And on things like his shoes and his gloves 
You want to look at like the palm of his hand where it's been, you know, touched and worked a lot because he's gripping stuff with his hand. You want to work on the knuckles and the folds in the wrist joint. That is where that leather is going to fade the most. And it's also where the detail is. So that's kind of a general rule of thumb with leather is that unless it's like brand new leather that um, hasn't been worked or faded at all, that's where all that weathering is going to come from. That's where that texture is going to be. And that's what gives leather that nice fantasy character because of the way that in the real world, that's, that's kind of how it ages and functions. So like the older that leather is or the more worn in and softer it is around things like the knuckles of gloves and the finger joints and things like that, or like the ankle joint of a boot or the toe of a boot where it's getting scraped up as it's walking along. That's where you want all that detail. All right, so I'm gonna start cutting in the pants now and he's gonna have red pants. And so you're probably watching this like, well, why are you painting it purple? Well, I want the red on these pants to be very saturated and have a lot of contrast. And with red, uh, there's a couple ways you can go about this because when you layer up red paints, they usually aren't distinct enough from each other through the range of shades to create high contrast. So with your base tone, you have to go extreme and you have to have higher jumps between shades of color to really make it work. So, Kind of like our green skin, I'm going extra dark. So in this case, it's going to be purple, which is extra dark from our mid-tone red. And then I'm taking a darker red, in this case, our Pro Acryl Burnt Red. But it doesn't really matter the brand or name of the paint. We're going dark purple, and then we have a darker red, and then a primary red. And then we're going to mix that up into a brighter color. So I'm going purple, and then I'm mixing with the darker red to create a maroon. And I'm cutting that in, sketching that in. Um, on the very smooth surfaces, uh, like his shoulder pads, like if you're doing painted armor, you want to paint that sketchy grain in the direction of the curve. So again, parallel to the direction of the curve. And then I'm gonna mix up that color into our brighter red and then go into brighter red and then we have our olive flesh which is going to create sort of a pinkish color and you want a very very small amount of that if we want to keep this looking you know red and not pink because it's really really easy to have the model read as pink if you have too much of that color so we're going to save that for like the final little steps and as i sketch this in just want to make sure to keep following the grains of things I want to make sure that i'm being meticulous so a good rule of thumb when you're doing this style of value painting is the brighter the color, the less of it you want. Okay, so what I mean by that is like we have our base tone, which is purple, I've covered the entire thing in that. And then our maroon, I want a little bit less of that, leaving the purple only in the recessed details. And then when we go to our mid-tone red, I want a little bit less of that. So we're working our way up into the highlights. Um, creating that gradient, creating that contrast, and then at the very final bit, our little mixture of red and olive flesh into that sort of pastel tone. I want that to be like the finest little details, picking out the smallest portion of an edge or a wrinkle or a piece of thread or something like that. And then on the shoulder pad, it's going to be like an edge highlight, and I'm going to do that little sketchy squiggle right in the middle to kind of get that little reflective shine, just like the muscles. And in the interest of time, and also to show off that you can do this technique with some metallic paints, I decided that all of the other sort of like Blood Bowl armor to his uniform is gonna be just like a iron steel color. So went ahead and just blocked that in, super simple. In keeping with our rule of thumb for this style, this metal isn't dark enough to be considered our super dark base. 
So in the case that you don't have a really dark sort of black metal, what you can do is take just regular black paint and thin it out and then go in and sketch in some shadows. So what I'm doing right now on the model is again taking that thinned out black paint and just going into all the parts that I want to be, you know, the shadowed area of the model, just kind of following with basic uh, lighting as if a, like a light source was above him, you know, sort of a zenithal type thing. Anywhere that's got like a distinct shadow on the model, that's where I want to cut in some of this thinned out black paint. And also, uh, I'm not going to use a wash on this model. And I'll talk about that more a bit later. But because we're being so extreme with our color differences, we have all that natural contrast already. But sometimes it doesn't always work specifically with things where the straps are crossing over the metal. There's not enough of a distinct uh, shade line there. So I want to sketch in some shadows around that type of stuff and maybe draw some little lines underneath or around certain shapes to create that type of contrast that we would get from a wash. So that's the step where I'm doing that right now. After that, I'm going to grab uh, a silver. So I have dark silver and silver from Pro Acryl, and I'm going to make a mixture of the two, just, you know, half and half. And that's what I'm going to start sketching in. And um, I'm not doing a true metallic metal. I'm not doing a met uh, non-metallic metal. I'm just, you know, kind of just sketching this in where I think the steel would be the most reflective um, and starting that in on some of these shapes doesn't have to be uh, super precise as long as it looks right to your eye like as long as like the bottom part is in shadow and the top part is brighter and shinier that's going to get the point across and it's just going to read right to the eye when it's on the table and you can go as dull or as shiny with this as you want um, i want this to be what i would consider like semi-polished so after this step i am going to grab the silver and just go over it one more time real quick do some little sketches and squiggles right down the center of those uh, shined areas with the pure silver just to pop it out one more time and also maybe pick out a couple of details especially on his uh, face mask thing that he's wearing there's some compound detail uh, like a grill and some edges and stuff I just want to pick that out just a little bit so that that detail is more distinct when it's on the table And the last thing we need to block in is going to be some of the brass parts. So he's got like these brass knuckles. Um, he's got some belt buckles and connector rings on his armor, things like that. So I've just got some bronze, just a like a darker brownish gold bronze color. Gonna cut those in. And if you have a special paint that's like a highlight to a bronze or like a brass color, uh, you can highlight it with that. What I did is I just grabbed a little bit of that silver that was already on the palette mixed it right in to create a shiny brass color and then went in and highlighted it. Again, I'm not being super precise with how I'm highlighting this, basically just going around finding hard corners or the top surfaces of things and just giving it a little pop with that silver bronze mixture just to give it an extra bit of shine um, on those areas that would be the shiniest. And you can go as hard or as soft with this as you want. Like you could just base it in bronze and just be like, it's just bronze color, like whatever. Or you could go into a full, uh, you know, true metallic metal or non-metallic metal if you're into that and do full workups for that. But part of the reason I really like this style is because I can paint things extremely fast with it. 
So I don't care if it's, you know, ultra precise and super detailed because this whole thing is sketchy. Like that's kind of the point. It's, I don't worry about if it's the textbook way of something looking metal or doing a non-metallic metal. I just want it to look cool and I want it to pop on the table. So I'm just gonna sketch it in. And again, I've got that thinned out black paint where I'm just going in and around some of the details where I feel it needs some more contrast, like these belt buckles and the leather and the belts. I'm just gonna drop that in there, draw little lines, stuff like that to create sort of a half-ass type of wash. And these uh, tusky things, like the teeth and the tusks, I'm gonna be pretty simple with those as well. I'm not doing anything special, it's just sketching in a base coat. Um, kind of around the base, I'm leaving a lot of the brushstroke texture visible so that it has kind of a rougher, sketchier shadow where that tusk is jammed into that mask. And just gonna base that in with the same olive flesh that we've been using. After that, I grab some ivory, like a dull ivory, I think the paint's called, but any type of brighter bone color will work as long as there's a, a little bit of contrast to it, it's fine. Um, bone is, is hard to have contrast to it unless it's like dirty or heavily weathered, or if you're thinking something like an antler or like a bull's horn where it has that, uh, I forget what the chemical is called, but it creates those browns and almost black colors around where the bone starts and ends out towards the point. Um, you can work and do all of that on this guy. I don't care. It's just like a tusk um, that he got jammed in there. So I'm just going to paint it that way. All right, so we got some last little steps to do before this dude's finished. So we got this big old giant shoulder pad, and it's a great place to have a number, because we want all of our Blood Bowl players to have a number. And doing this sketchy style is another great way to practice other techniques. So we talked about stippling in the beginning, and if you learn how to stipple, you can learn how to glaze, and then you get into uh, wet blending from there. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff, and this is sort of the start of all that. And freehanding. So I'm just going to be doing the same single stroke sketch lines over and over in different angles and that creates a number, it creates letters and numbers and then from there you can get into uh, compound shapes and then from compound shapes you're freehanding whole portraits and stuff. It's pretty, pretty easy once you grasp the basic concepts. So I've got that olive flesh and then I'm going to do some ivory and do some cleaner lines and then at the end I'm going to take some of our black paint and just draw a little like uh, shadow like a drop shadow line on parts of it so that it pops out from the shoulder pad a little bit more and I just said earlier that I'm not gonna use a wash on this so um, This final step with the black paint again. I'm just gonna have that thin thin down So it's not pure uh, like not right out of the pot super opaque black paint just uh, thin it down and I'm gonna lightly sketch in some deeper shadows into some areas where I want a little bit more contrast so um, around some of the details on the leather and armor, uh, in the deepest parts of his muscles so that the muscles pop out a little bit more. He's got a bunch of these uh, jagged uh, breaks and chips in his armor, so I'm just going to darken those up a little bit so they pop a little bit more. Um, this is totally optional. It's like From here, uh, you could put a wash on the model. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not using a very stainy wash like uh, Games Workshop. Like that would ruin everything that we just did if you use the Games Workshop wash, so don't do it. Like, I tell all of my students in private tutorials, like, if you're using Games Workshop wash, like, throw them in the trash, because they're, they're garbage, and they hold you back from learning more advanced techniques, because they stain whatever they touch, and it ruins everything, unless it's just a flat, opaque color. So, 
Um, I recommend doing an oil wash, which is very clean and gets into all the details and it's easy to clean up. Or if you want sort of a one and done scenario, get the Army Painter uh, wash system where they have the uh, like the dark tone, strong tone, etc. And the quick shade wash mixing medium to create a diluted wash that flows over the model very easily, collects in the details, doesn't coffee stain anything it touches. Um, that's a pretty good one for you know one and done or fire and forget, whatever you want to call it. Um, but on this guy, like I built in so much contrast with our sketch style that I felt I didn't need to slap a wash on it. I would just draw some lines in the areas where I thought that it needed that sort of shadow um, that a wash would create. So that's just what I did. It was a very last little step. Um, I did paint his eyes a little bit. He's got like some little dash marks in there for his squinty eyes. Um, I'm a pretty good painter, but I'm not good enough to paint those tiny eyes and do it on camera at the same time. So, um, you know, your results may vary. Just practice and and get in there. Or you can take my stance on most models in the Warhammer range where their eyes aren't sculpted well enough to actually paint eyeballs. So I just value paint the face and then put a wash on there, and that's enough. You can do that. But a lot of times with orcs, they got uh, some bigger heads with bigger sculpts, which means you can kind of get your brush in there and paint the eyeballs if you want to, it's up to you. And that's it, he's done. Um, it took me, I wanna say maybe like 45 minutes to paint this whole model start to finish. Um, and the video is about 27 minutes long. Uh, I've sped things up and that's why it's just like I didn't want you to sit here for like almost an hour and, and watch me paint this while I was talking about stuff I also don't have that much to talk about so really fast style super free low stakes a lot of fun try it out hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll catch you next time